Democrat Jamie Raskin of Maryland just called out Donald Trump's love of dictators and the Raskin humiliation of Trump was both verbal and visual. Raskin showed images of Trump with Russia's Vladimir Putin, China's Xi Jinping, Hungary's Viktor Orban, and North Korea's Kim Jong-un. The vicious autocrats of Russia, the police state theocrats of Iran, the totalitarian communist billionaire bureaucrats of China, North Korea, and all their corrupt oligarchs and plutocrats seek to destroy the very idea of human rights and political freedom that are the defining ideals of America and still the hope of a world struggling against their oppression. The tyrants have something else in common. Donald Trump, he loves them all and they love him back. He loves them because he envies their total control over their societies and they love him because they know they can manipulate and control him. He praises all of them, Putin, Orban, Xi, Kim Jong-un. Trump exults in their friendship and emulates their control over what he calls their people. Raskin then read back direct quotes of Donald Trump talking about his admiration and love for China's totalitarian leader, Xi Jinping. When he was president, Trump said that he and Xi, the president of China and chairman of the Communist Party, quote, love each other. And Trump called Xi a brilliant man. He openly envied and marveled over Xi's total control over his people, saying, quote, he controls 1.4 billion people with an iron fist. And when people ask questions about Xi and the CCP's role at the beginning of the COVID-19 crisis, Trump repeatedly defended Xi and praised his excellent leadership, calling him a brilliant man, smart, brilliant, everything perfect. We love each other. President Xi, who's a friend of mine, who's very smart, very good man, nobody like that. The look, the brain, the whole thing. My feeling toward you is an incredibly warm one, he said. Trump's repeatedly praised Russia's lawless and bloody invasion of Ukraine as smart. At a Mar-a-Lago fundraiser in 2022, he gushed that Putin was taking over a country, a vast, vast location, a great piece of land with a lot of people and just walking right in. At the presidential debate earlier this month, he refused to say that he wanted Ukraine to win the war, but said he would end the war in 24 hours, meaning he would, per usual, cave in to Putin's propaganda and outrageous demands and cede large parts of Ukraine to the Russian strongman who imprisons poisons and murders his political opponents. Donald Trump's admiration of dictators has been a constant throughout his life. There are several reports that Trump repeatedly read Hitler's autobiographical manifesto, Mein Kampf. As president, Donald Trump was proud of his relationship with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Trump spoke about their connection in glowing terms during an interview recorded by journalist Bob Woodward. The CIA says about Kim Jong-un that he's cunning, crafty, but ultimately stupid. I disagree. He's cunning, he's crafty, and he's very smart. You know, Why does the CIA say that? Because they don't know, okay? Because they don't know. They have no idea. I'm the only one that knows. I'm the only one he deals with. He won't deal with anybody else. The word chemistry. You meet somebody and you have a good chemistry. You meet a woman. Yeah. In one second, you know whether or not it's all going to happen. And is this all designed to drive Kim to the negotiating no, table? No, no. It was designed for whatever reason. It was designed, who knows, instinctively. Let's talk instinct. Trump had a good instinct about Kim Jong-un. They had great chemistry. Trump knew what would happen. What would happen? A summit meeting? Okay, Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un had two of those, but they never reached an agreement on North Korea's nuclear weapons. And the brutality of Kim Jong-un's regime, its murderous treatment of dissent, continues. But listening to Donald Trump, you get the feeling that Trump is envious of the total control and power of the world's worst dictators. Trump has frequently said he likes and respects Putin, Xi Jinping, and Kim Jong-un. Trump says having a loving relationship with them is a good thing. Well, maybe for Trump, but it does not help the people who these dictators keep oppressing, and it does not help the cause of democracy or the defense of democracy and basic human rights. All of that, however, often seems to be expendable in MAGA world. As long as Donald Trump, the dictator, is in charge. Here are some of the Trump diehards. Watch. The former president said on day one he's going to be a dictator for a day. How does that sit with you? 
It's just great because, you know, there's a verse in the Bible that says, because sentence against an evil deed is not executed speedily, the hearts of the sons of men are fully set to do evil. He has to, from day one, start kicking butt and putting things back into place. Not out of vindic vindictiveness, but because things have just gotten so crazy. We're no longer having to, the, a choice between right and left. We have a choice now between right and absolute craziness. The things that are going on in the border and the, the way that the, our government has been allowed to just destroy America and take our white rights. It's just absolutely unconscionable. MAGA translation. America has become total chaos and anarchy, and we need a strong man to crack down on everybody and everything. The premise that instability and lawlessness reign supreme right now is absolute nonsense. But the MAGA folks are clearly terrified of what they see on Fox News and what they hear from Donald Trump. And they want him to clamp down and get out a paddle, literally. You, you know, you don't have to like the words that come out of the man's mouth, but sometimes in life we all need a good paddling from the principal to, to set our life on the right track. And this country does need a little bit of that. It, we need a little paddling. We need a little paddling? Well, the MAGA desire for a strong man who meets out violent punishment is concerning for several reasons. And the implications are dangerous. Because when the paddling, the violence, and the arrests begin, it's clear that there are some segments of American society, perhaps the 20 to 25 percent of the population that support MAGA, who will cheer on the unconstitutional actions. It's bad enough if government authorities break the law. It's worse when citizens encourage it or look the other way. Ruth ben Giat, author of Strongman Mussolini to the Present, points out that Donald Trump shares personality traits with many of the leaders she has studied. The traits include a massive ego, megalomania, and the belief that only I, the strongman, can fix it. She also addresses the propaganda techniques these figures deploy. Governance is not about public welfare or, welfare or any of normal presidential goals. It's about keeping immunity and staying, amassing as much power as possible. And so Trump is highly unstable, deeply destructive, but he's also crazy like a fox. And he has the same personality traits as many of these uh, leaders I've studied, massive ego, megalomania, only I can fix it, all of this. But it covers up a deep insecurity. So they become obsessed with humiliating and controlling and dominating everyone around them. And what better domination game than to, to, to make millions of people believe in an alternate reality that benefits you mm. by depicting you as infallible, I am your voice, and keeping you, uh, ideally, keeping you in office. Or returning the tyrannical strongman to office, which is what Donald Trump is attempting now. Throughout Trump's political career, a lot of Americans have excused his language and style with things like, oh, he's just being politically incorrect, or... He's making jokes, or he should not be taken literally. The problem, of course, is that there are literal consequences around the globe when a figure like Donald Trump takes power. There may be nothing that any of us can do about the alarming complacency or acceptance of many Americans regarding Trump, but taking political actions against Trump by making the case to keep him out of office again is crucial. Democrats like Jamie Raskin know the stakes, and sparking conversations or debates in congressional hearings is important. Lawmakers have a crucial public and political platform, and kudos to all lawmakers who see the dangers of tyrannical dictatorships and are troubled by Donald Trump's own ambitions. We stand up for the ideals of human rights and democracy for all. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm David Schuster. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching the video, guys. We also love it if you hit the join button below because that makes you a member. And members allow us to be independent, honest. We could be as progressive as we want, no corporate media influence, and that's all because of you guys. We love doing the show with our members. Hit the join button, become one of the Young Turks.